Okay, here we go, and I'm back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Uh, for and foremost, I want to say all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashak Yahweh and to all the brothers and sisters of the remnant, Yasha Allah, all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh All right, so I want to uh, begin this lesson, and this lesson, I'm going to start from a book uh, a lot of people are not too familiar with. Uh, not, well, not a lot, but some brothers are not familiar with, and some brothers is, and that's going to be your challenge. And this lesson is going to be the challenge to you to, to prove that the book of Jashar and the book, yeah, the book of Jashar is of the Bible and of our records. And this lesson, hands down, is going to prove and edify you in the spirit of truth and righteousness, righteousness I hope. And this lesson, what I'm saying, is going to be the challenge to you. Yeah. The scripture said, line upon line and precept upon precept. And with that being said, I'm going to go right to the book of Joshua, 12th chapter. And we're going to jump around a little. It's going to start at the first verse. It reads, and when the king heard the words of Abram, Abram, he ordered him to be put into prison. And Abram was 10 days in prison. Second verse, at the end of those days, the king ordered that all the king's princes and governors of different provinces and sages should come before him and that they sat before him and Abram was still in the house of confinement. And from there, I'm going to jump down to the 18th verse. We're going to read. And Haran at that time felt inclined to follow the ways of Abram, but he kept it within himself. And Haran said in his heart, Behold, now the king has seized Abram on account of these things which Abram did. And it shall come to pass that if Abram prevail over the king, I will follow him. But if the king prevail, I will go after the king. And when Terah had spoken, Terah, and, and when Terah had spoken this to the king concerning Haran, his son, the king ordered Haran to be seized with Abram. So Haran already was double-minded, right? And so let's go to the 20, 21st verse reads, And they brought them both, Abram and Haran, his brother, to cast them into the fire and all the inhabitants of the land. And the king's servants and princes and all the women and little ones were there, standing that day over them. 22nd verse. And the king's servants took Abram, his brother, and they stripped them of all their clothes, except in their lower garments, which were upon them. 23rd verse. And they bound their hands and feet with linen, cords. And the servants of the king lifted them up and cast them both into the furnace. And Yahweh loved Abram, and he had compassion over him. And Yahweh came down and delivered Abram from the fire, and he was not burned. 25th verse, for all the cords which but all the cords with which they bound him were burned, while Abram remained and walked about in the fire. So the cords that bound him were burned. So he was free to walk around, in other words. All right? 25th verse, I mean 26th verse. And Haran died when they cast him into the fire, and he was burned to ashes, for his heart was not perfect with Yahweh. And those men were cast him, cast him into the fire. The flame of the fire spread over them, and they were burned, and 12 men of them died. All right, so 27 verse. And Abram walked in the midst of the fire three days and three nights. And all the servants of the king saw him walking in the fire. And they came and told the king, saying, Behold, we have Abram walking about in the midst of the fire. And even the lower garments which were upon him are not burned. But the cord with which he was bound is burned. And when the king heard their words, his heart fainted, and he would not believe them. So he sent other faithful princes to see this matter. And they went and saw it and told it to the king. And the king rose to go and see it. 
And he saw Abram walking to and fro in the midst of the fire and saw Haran's body burn. And the king wondered greatly. And the king ordered Abram to be taken out of the fire. And his servants approached to take him out, and they could not, for the fire was round about, and the flame ascended toward them from the furnace. And the king's servants fled from it. And the king rebuked them, saying, Make haste and bring Abram out the fire. You shall die. You shall not die. Hmm. And the servants of the king again approached to bring Abram out, and the flames came upon them and burnt their faces. So that eight of them died, and when the king saw it, that his servants could not approach the fire, lest they should be burned. The king called to Abram, O servant of the Most High, who is who is in heaven, go forth from the midst of the come forth, go forth from the midst of the fire, and come hither before me. And Abram hearkened to the voice of the king. He went forth from the fire and came and stood before the king. 33rd verse. And when Abram came out of the king, came out of uh, out with out the king, and all his servants saw Abram coming before the king with his lower garments upon him, for they were not burned, but the cord with which he was bound was burned. 34th verse. And the king said to Abram, how is it that thou was not burnt in the fire? And Abraham said to the king, The God of heaven and earth, in whom I trust, and who is all in his power, all is in his power. He delivered me from the fire and through which thou didst cast me. And Haran, the brother of Abraham, was burnt to ashes, and they sought for his body, and they found it consumed. And Haran was 82 years old when he died in the fire of Chasdom. And the king, princes, and inhabitants of the land, seeing that Abram was delivered from the fire, they came and bowed down to Abram. And Abram said to them, Do not bow down to me, but bow down to the God of this world who has made you and serve him and go in his ways, for it is he who delivered me from out of this fire, and it is he who created the souls and spirits of all men and formed man and, and his mother's womb and brought him forth into the world. And it is he who will deliver those that trust in him from all pain. Right? And I'm going to stop there. So y'all got a good idea where I'm going. Y'all got a good idea what this is about, right? You know where I'm going. So the unbeliever and the wavering one, which was Haran, died. He let him be consumed in the fire. The Most High knew his thoughts and heard his thoughts, all right? And he let him be consumed, the unbelieving one, right? So from there, you know where I'm going. Daniel, third chapter. All you seasoned brothers know where I'm going. So all you unbelievers that had a problem with the book <laughs> of Jeshua or Yeshua, whatever you want to call it, you in for you you got your rude awakening, all right? And it don't stop there. Now I'm going to read Daniel, the third chapter. We're going to start. We're going to jump around. We're going to skip around too, because Scripture said line upon line, precept upon precept, right? So we're going to go from Daniel, third chapter. We're going to start at the first verse. Nebuchadnezzar, king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth three, six, three, there are six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Ancient Babylon, right? Second verse, then Nebuchadnezzar. The king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the, ded to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Right? And from there, we're going to jump to the 10th verse. 
Thou, king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sultry, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. 11 verse, And whoso falleth not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. 12 verse, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Right? We're going to jump down to 14 verse. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Right? Let's jump to the 16th verse. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. 19 verse. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. Okay. From there, we're going to jump to, so he made it seven times more hotter than normal. So from there, we're going to jump to, uh, to the, uh, uh, 23rd verse. I was going to start at 24. Let's go to 23rd. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. 24th verse. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in the haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have not have no hurt, and no form, no form of the fourth is like the Son of the Most High. And the fourth, no, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of the Yahweh, Son of the Most High. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the fire, the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High Power, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Twenty-seven verse. And the princes and the governors and captains and the kings and counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an, an hair of their head singed, neither was their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be Yahweh, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego, whom have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they may not serve nor worship any god except their own power. Right. So he got a first-hand lesson of something that happened in the past. They was put, tried, as we are being tried. The remnant is being tried. Okay? Quiet as it kept. <laughs> you in the fiery furnace, if you ain't been paying attention what's been going on in the earth, and happening all over the earth, not just the part, not just Babylon, but all over the earth, <laughs> the remnant is being tried, right? And with that being said, I want to go directly, and they had faith, okay? This was faith. 
Uh, Abraham was de- uh, tried and de- had to show forth faith. So it wasn't just uh, the faith that we was uh, showing that him giving up his son, like we read in the Bible with, with, with Isaac. He went through a couple of things. That's why you got to go into your other histories of the book of Joshua and get that history. He had to dim show faith, and he did, man, many times, as you can see, right? And and look, it happened to Daniel. Remember the scripture tell you Daniel, and Daniel, Daniel knew what to do. Shadrach and Meshach, they knew what to do, because why? They read the book. They knew the history. They knew their forefathers' history, and that's why history is so important. You got to know what to do and when to do it, man. You got to always demonstrate and show uh, faith. You're going to be done. If you're part of the remnant, you're going to be put to that anyway. Okay? But with that, let me go to, uh, real quick, and I'll go back. Let's go to uh, the book of Syrah or the book of Ecclesiasticus and Apocrypha. We're going to read the second chapter, and we're going to start at the first verse. All right? We're going to start at the first verse. It says, My son... If thou come to serve Yahweh, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright, meaning your mind, and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at the at that lot at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Yeah, and we all have been put in a lower state in the ghettos and slums uh, of America, those that are the remnant and those that are in the ghettos, okay? Most of us are of the remnant, right? Fifth verse, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, in a furnace of adversity, in a furnace of adversity. And we enduring that now in Babylon, America. Uh, Sixth verse, believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. That's something you got to do. Seventh verse, ye that fear Yahweh, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. Eighth verse, Ye that fear Yahweh, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. And I want to stop there. And he said, in the seventh verse, he said, Ye that fear Yahweh, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest ye fall. And that's serious to wait, that part. <laughs> you got to have patience in this work, man. And man, I'm doing it. The age I am at. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> man, oh man. And um, I could go on, and, but at the same time, I promised myself so that I wouldn't go into the testimony that I have, you know, uh, because, uh, you know, you got a lot of unbelievers, man. So, but um, when he said wait upon him, it's serious. And maybe I say that testimony for another time, but most high willing, I don't know. But, um, them angels are here. That's all I can tell you. Just like you see them chariots, them angels are here. <laughs> hey, they close by. <laughs> oh, man. So when the scriptures say, wait ye upon him, it mean that. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to go too off topic, which I probably did a little bit. But um, yeah, it is what it is. And when he said, wait ye upon him, it's a literal wait. We have to wait ye upon him. Scripture said, wait ye upon him until he till Yahweh shall rise and rise to the prey, man. We gotta wait on Yahweh. Who the world ignorantly called Christ. We we can't run about willy-nilly and do what we want when we want. We can't. That's how the world do. Run on their emotions and all that nonsense. Now we, we gotta uh endure hardship. Like I said, it's easier said than done. It's easier said than done. But uh, this is, was a short lesson. And uh, you see that um, our history, the book of Joshua, is part of our history, is part of the Bible. 
for you to understand it's part of the Holy Bible, just like the Apocrypha is part of the Holy Bible. Uh, it's time for you to go back and read, man, and go over those books. If you're not familiar with it, it is what it is. The scripture said, line upon line, precept upon precept. Y'all seen what I just read. So stop the foolery and buffoonery. And, you know, you don't want the most high to go uh, send judgment. Because we're in a time of judgment, as you can see. But um, Abraham endured that faith. And the point I was making with Daniel, Daniel, Daniel uh, and Misha, they studied, man. When, when you know the story, when Daniel had to interpret the dream, <laughs> Daniel, Daniel had to go back into the books and the histories. Y'all yeah, know this history, man. So you think Daniel didn't know about the book of Joshua? <laughs> and think, but he probably didn't know he was going to be the one tested the same way, though. But best believe he read that book, too. So... You know, you're not alone. Yo, we, we, we all got to do that. We got to go back to those books we was told uh, that was forbidden, not to read. And who forbid them? Your oppressor? <laughs> I, I, I beg the difference because um, it was it was men of Yahshua Allah that did that. Because uh, I'll give you a good example. On my phone, I have the app, the book of Joshua. Now, that app can flip to the books of the, you know, the other 66 books of the Bible. And the Apocrypha. But when I look at the, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, um, the book of uh, content, when you read the books where the books are at, it names all the books. Like I said, the, all the books that are in Apocrypha, it has all the books of Jeshua and the book of Jubilee and the book of Enoch. So it was, it was men of our nation that told us that. <laughs> Esau knew about these books. He wouldn't have put it in the app. So you got to go back and read like I got to do, and I've been doing. Okay? You, 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 your learning don't stop. As long as you're breathing, your learning do not stop. So you, you got to go back and get familiar with those books, man. Now, the, the book, you got to be careful. Uh, and and I, I caught myself getting a... Um, a copy a couple of years ago of the book of Enoch, which I found was not accurate. Okay. That book is, you know, I wouldn't recommend right away. Or if you do get one, I recommend you get an old version. And that's what you got to get, the oldest version. And then you compare it, you know, with a book that somebody else had that from way back. Because if the stories don't line up, then nine times of ten, that ain't the right book. And I had to find that out. Because you got these new authors and publishers pu uh, plagiarizing the book of Enoch Hart. That's why the controversy goes back and forth. You know, and, and, and you got people talking about it. So, uh, but you need an old version, original version. And um, I even have a video. Uh, which I stumbled across, well, I didn't stumble, the most high got me to it, and um, it's on my Rumble account, k 7 his is my handle, and um, it tell you the history, uh, one minute history, I think it's a minute or three minute history of uh, the fallen angels, and it lines up with the book of Just Shuffle, sure because I read it in my app, my app version, which is weird, is accurate, it lines up with it, with the story, everything, so, yeah, man, that book of Joshua is something. Uh, one of the books you gotta you gotta get because it shows you the examples that um, how he proved Abraham, and you learn other histories about Abraham. I I think I went into it one time. I gotta find a lesson. If I didn't, I might have to do it again. But yeah, man, Abraham didn't just waltz up and no. Abraham was proved, man. So when we read about the Bible and the Bible, it tells you about it, it goes in the history, the background history, man. And it's deep, and it's good to know, man. It lines up with Genesis, all that. Lines right up, right up with it. So with that, I'm going to say shalom. I'm going to get off of here. I rambled a couple of minutes more than I should have. But I hope you was edified with that story that we are in a fiery furnace. Fiery furnace, man. And with that, I'm going to say shalom. Until next time, I know it's been a while, but I'm back here. And most high will, I'll be back with another lesson. Because we literally live in Bible prophecy, <laughs> uh, revelations all day. With that, I'm going to say shallow one.
Yasha out.